So let me just show this to you again. So let's do which one shall we use? Let's just do the spy by dot cumulative sum dot plot. So we can do the spy. Basically, we can plot that. Yeah. And now let's just plot the moving averages. So let's just go 50. We need to do the cumulative sum first dot mean dot plot. Right. So now we be basically plotting the 50 day moving average. And as you can see, oh, it didn't do this because it actually plotted this on a different chart. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm in futures land at the moment and I <laughs> went ES, which is the futures contract on the S&P 500. Okay. <laughs> so it's called E-minis. So see, this is the moving average here, this in orange here. Yeah? And see how this price oscillates. And now we're just doing another moving average, the 500. And you will see that oscillates a lot slower. So see how smooth that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what we do is we're basically getting rid of the price. And then all that's left is our moving averages. Yeah. yeah. And then what we're saying is, is the difference between these moving averages predictive of the returns in the future? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're basically interested in that. And if they are, then we can use this as a trading strategy, right? And so mm -hmm. what we're basically doing all the time when, when you do sort of financial markets and so on, you want to see, well, is what I'm doing actually predictive? And the way to do this is effectively to first produce a factor and then do a linear regression with this factor and the returns and then see whether there is any predictability. So in a sense, linear regression, we can do this, but oftentimes all we need to just calculate is the correlation. So I want to just go back and maybe do a shorter period here with our moving averages. So we have 550. And again, you see that there's a shorter oscillation time here. And even if we do 550 here, you can also see it's just oscillating a bit shorter. Yeah. <laughs> so now what we can do is we can basically say, well, how does our factor correlate with our returns? Yeah. So what we do is we go factor dot core. Yeah. And then we go reds dot s p y and that basically gives us the correlation of we need to do factor dot spy as well right this is the correlation so it's pretty small so if we plot this plt dot plot factor dot s p y reds dot s p y so basically how much does our factor actually explain the returns of the SPY? What you can see here is basically a big blob. So, so there isn't much, but it's got a little bit of a slope, 0 0.02. Now, in terms of explanatory value, it's interesting because, you know, when it's perfectly predictable, this value would be one. So 0 0.02 is quite small. However, when we talk about this, Oftentimes, when we get a, a value that is more than 0 0.025, then we're actually in business. So that's actually something that has an acceptable explanatory value. I mean, that can change. It's just a very rough ballpark. But 0 0.025 is actually something that has a bit of explanatory value. Now, let me just see if we could just do the correlation between all these factors. Oh yeah, so it doesn't like that. But what we can do is we can try the other ones as well. So we can try, for example, TLT with TLT. And there you go. Now, one thing actually that I haven't done here correctly, which I should have thought about 
but I didn't, was when we correlate our factor value, we actually need to correlate it to the future return. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I actually did right now is I had the factor value and I correlate this to return, but the return is backward looking. In fact, what we really need to do is we need to shift the returns to the left so that our current factor value is actually correlated to this future return, which is then if we shift it to the left, it's here. So they overlap. <laughs> so what we need to do is shift <laughs> minus one, right? So remember when we shift the returns to the left, we're actually looking at the future returns. <laughs> and so this is going to be more interesting. And see, then actually this correlation already drops <laughs> really mm -hmm. significantly. And the same is probably true for the SPY. Well, actually, no, look at this. This is quite interesting. So here we've got a negative correlation. So it basically means when we get a negative factor value, it predicts a positive return and vice versa. <laughs> And 0 0.032 isn't great, but it's already kind of acceptable. <laughs>